Well, hi, and welcome to my shop here. It's November 15th. It's been a few days since I've been in my shop. Well, I have some family visitors here. So before I start working on this radio, I'm going to have to give a bit of an explanation. I'm going to have to do it three different ways because there's three different ways people have come to this video, and I don't know about you. So one way is you're a regular subscriber. You're watching my videos as I post them. Thank you very much for coming along on, on my journey here in my shop. And so you might remember, you probably don't, this was in my shop quite a few months ago, and I was nearing the end of it, and I had to set it aside in favor of doing some other work, and I haven't gotten back to it till just now. So it's been a few months. Um, in the meantime, you know, because you've been watching the videos as I've been posting them, that the last radio I worked on, a little five tube radio, uh, involved a lot of interesting, at least for me, interesting uh, testing and experimenting with my SDR radio over here, this little SDR radio. Uh, I'm hoping to apply some of what I learned there to this radio. Uh, not only just for interest sake, but also to try to sort out a few things on here that I think I was having trouble sorting out. Now it could be that out of the blue, this is the f you're you're a, an absolutely new viewer. You've never seen any of my videos before. You don't know what the heck is going on in this shop. Well, let me reassure you, I also don't know what the heck is going on in here half the time. I uh, I shoot these videos essentially live. I do very little editing, just some transitions, in fact, uh, that I need to clean up. So literally, if I'm in the shop here working for an hour, a 59-minute video is coming out of it. Well, that video is going to include me stumbling around, uh, saying things that aren't necessarily correct, uh, making observations that aren't valid, coming to conclusions that I shouldn't get because I don't have all the information. All that stuff is going to happen in here. So, as I often say to my viewers, put on your thinking cap yourself. Uh, don't swallow everything I say as I work away here. And don't get too excited if I do make a mistake of some sort. <clears throat> It probably won't be a big deal in the end. And just another thing for all, all of you to understand, I'm, I'm weighing up all the time what's important to focus on and what's not important. Sa same as you, same as anybody doing this kind of work or doing anything. So sometimes I may make a statement, make an observation, and then just walk away from it and never return to it. Uh, without saying anything too much, I've just assessed it as being not worth the time and effort at this point to, to dig into it because... There's all kinds of things you could dig into with these radios if you really wanted to. Now, the last kind of viewer that could be one you could be, you could be a viewer who's been watching the series on this Model S38, and you just you just watched the last video, and this one's just been posted. So, or you're maybe a year from now, you're going along through the series. Just be aware that there's a big gap between the last video and this one where I've been working on other stuff, I'm coming back to this pretty cold, in fact. I, I don't remember an awful lot. Okay, so that's my introduction for all, all three types of viewers. Now, I had some notes here that I left with this, with this radio. These are things I was doing at the last minute. Uh, interesting, echoes of what I did with the 5-tube radio just a few days ago, um, where I'm detecting the local oscillator and then noticing the local oscillator is duplicated up here. I'm noticing the local oscillator may be strong enough to cause a uh, IF frequency conversion to take place up here and bring in signals that you shouldn't hear uh, into the radio. So it's kind of the same stuff I was fooling around with um, with this little radio, only this is a, a much better radio. By the way, I have this big brother waiting to come in here. It's big brother is, is another couple inches in all directions. Probably has more tubes, certainly has more tubes and more stuff. I don't know anything about that other radio, but it's the big brother of this guy. And there could be other big brothers too. And I don't know how many how many are in this family, but quite, quite a few radios look similar to this from the Halicrafters company. So another thing I was trying to figure out was is the local oscillator supposed to be above the target frequency or below the target frequency which is easy to figure out on a small radio uh, but when you get into this kind of stuff and the upper frequencies are going all the way up to 32 megahertz it can become a little bit challenging knowing for sure 
whether the local oscillator should be above or, or below. If you get it wrong uh, on the higher bands, you can still make the radio work, and it may even work kind of satisfactorily, kind of, but you're not getting out of it what you could get out of it. So that's why it's important to sort these things out. Uh, so let's get it out of the cabinet here. I mean, it's, it's half out anyway. These are just the knobs that go with it. Just pull it out here. First thing I'm going to want to do is operate the radio and just give it a, a once over to see how well it was working. There we go. Hmm. That's odd. It has a plate down here. It's riveted on, but a screw on here, and nothing in there. Looks like you could pick this one out. Maybe then you can rotate this plate out of the way and you can probably access some stuff uh, inside here. I noticed too that the whole base, the base has something. What's this? That's also a rivet. Well, the rest are screws. I don't know what they're trying to do there exactly. Well, that's interesting too. When you remove this plate, it feels like it's non-conductive. You don't have a big hole inside. You've got small little access holes. And no, no doubt for accessing tuning elements in there. Oh my gosh, this, look at this. <laughs> that plate just, just went for a big ride here on the rivet. Lucky I didn't bend it. I don't know if I knew that or not before. Okay, set down the cabinet. Everything's intriguing. Tricky engineers. Okay, uh, I don't think there's too much reason to hesitate to hook this guy up to speakers. Uh, except that I can't remember how to do it. This has got to be the output transformer here. Uh, I see a yellow and a black wire disappearing down into the chassis two wires. So this is either speaker or antenna. Let's take a look. Well, okay, I'm sure it's speaker. And so the speaker leads. Why, why is why is the output going down into the chassis and then coming up over here? These are actually, this is actually a plug. Wow, maybe a couple different ways to disconnect the speaker. Uh, I don't think it's a big deal hooking up the speaker. Okay, but I think coffee first. Coffee is the priority. Okay, first thing to do is play the radio, see what it does in the state it's in. Now just to remind myself of the uh, controls. So this one here, this threaded one, is CW pitch. And you're actually, you're actually turning the slug inside a coil there. Um, Although when it's on the radio, there's a knob, but you can see there's a stopper here to keep you from just turning and turning and turning and turning, and eventually uh, some damage is likely to occur in the radio. So there's a blocker. Here's the band selectors. They just give us numbers. One is over here. Four is over there. Band number one. Band number one. Uh, where's the numbers? crazy? There's no numbers here. Um, what am I missing here? Oh! <laughs> okay, so they've solved that by doing these lines. So band number one. I wonder if this was an afterthought. That you went and put the whole radio together and then realized, oh my gosh, you have to put these white lines in here. One is the inside. So band one is the low frequency, the high number is the high frequency. Okay, got it. And the last control 
is volume. This is the on off switch, my right. Stand by and receive. Oh my gosh. Stand by and receive. And the on off button isn't is right kind of in the middle. No, that's a noise limiter. Hey, where's the on-off switch? AMCW, speaker and phones. Speaker, AM, noise limiter off. Noise limiters aren't of much value these days. Receive, standby. Hey, where's the on-off switches in the volume control? Okay. <laughs> hey, want to know where that is? Every radio's a little different. So, we'll start with the switch off, apply some power, Nothing has happened, which is perfect. So when I turn the radio on, we should see these lights come on briefly. Bright, not so semi-bright, sort of bright. And then go down, whoosh, like that. And then there's a chance they're going to reappear, but maybe not. Very, very slightly reappear. Doesn't look like it. Turn the volume up a little bit. What band are we on? Uh, band one. The speaker I have connected is a shop speaker up on the it's mounted on the wall up here. There we go. Sounds pretty good. Now I'm on an out. I'm attached to an outdoor speaker, outdoor speaker, an outdoor antenna on a long lead-in. So, uh, and plus we should put this up on full power here. Okay. We'll tune it. What do we get? Not with this. We'll tune it with this. Okay, it sounds pretty normal. The stations would come in around here. Station there. It's going here, but so it sounds like the radio is picking up a lot of stuff, but it's not picking up any stations. So what exactly is it picking up? Is it is it noises that are in the frequency range that I'm hunting for? So I've got the radio tuned to. I should have this up on zero while I'm doing this actually. I have the radio tuned to a certain frequency and we're hearing little noises. Are those noises from right around that frequency or are they being converted in from far away through various weird machinations of these uh, um, frequency changing radios? Good question. Don't know the answer but it's not picking up any stations. It would probably pick at least one up off that antenna. Okay, but it sounds like it's receiving. Okay, we'll go to the next band. Okay, so the next band, band 2, 1.7 to 5. And we're certain to not hear any stations here, but it should pick up stuff. But again, we don't know if this is images coming in, or all kinds of weird stuff could be causing these sounds or it could be exactly what's out there to be picked up probably most of this would be locally generated noises here in my house don't know sounds normal there's, there's nothing there worth hearing anyway now, the next band may get more interesting it's going from 5 14 14 is certainly active right now at this time of day now I'm in AM mode. We're going through a ham band. I didn't hear a thing.
word here means that he paid attention to it. Yahweh did. He respected it. Yahweh loved it. That was probably 5.330. The last couple of days I've tried picking up WTWW because they tend to play at certain times of day uh, oldie uh, rock music, sounds like AM radio. And I, I enjoy listening to that when, when I'm not paying much attention, maybe working around in my office or doing whatever. And uh, I haven't been able to pick it up for the last week. I'm kind of wondering what happened to it. Apparently, it's gone. It's gone from shortwave. That's kind of disappointing. Very expensive to broadcast shortwave. Powerful transmitters using large amounts of electricity. And I'm sure the transmitters need attention. Well, we got one station, so I mean, it, it is receiving. There's probably really only one station out here to get. You can tell where it is. We find out what frequency we're on here. And we'll just we'll, we'll check the uh, dial accuracy. It'll just take a moment. Get a peek at uh, if this at all is at all realistic. Quite certain that's 9.330. We're listening to. Okay, so I'm just going to loosely couple my signal generator output here. Just going to lay it basically on the antenna wire. Okay. And 9.33 is what I think it is. Oh, can't get there from here. Gotta go this way. Now you hear the heterodyne. You can see the error in my frequency counter. 9.330 is what this really is. Okay, and on the dial, what's that actually say on the dial? Let's take a look. Well, that would be 9.33. That's pretty good. So, dial accuracy, very good. But it could be I set it. <laughs> I adjusted it right there, so it's accurate right there, but nowhere else. Okay, and we'll try the last band. Just shoot to the top here. 32. To turn the volume up a bit to hear the noise. Now there is stuff way up on these high bands. I've been doing a ham radio stuff way up here, 28 megahertz. comes to life here. I'm quiet again. We're at 20 megahertz here. Sixteen. Now there's a powerful short wave station right around here. Sometimes. Nothing happened. ham radio band, there's certainly ham radio guys there. 20 meter band. It's huh. a weird thing there, but let's tune this guy in. So it's in a 13 megahertz area that's a European shortwave band. But it sounds like American, uh, an American station, which is what I would typically pick up here. We'll do a quick frequency check on that. Uh, let's 
it says 13.7 is what this would work out to with this set to zero. 13.7. Okay, let's find out here. Verily I say unto you. Do you know when the uh, King James Version of the Bible was produced? It was produced in that old English, ye, and all verily I say, and all that stuff. And nobody spoke that way. Nobody spoke that way. That, that was old, old English, even then, in the year, when was that? 1500? 13.8 is what this is showing. Now, wait a minute. Could be fooled here. 12.8, nothing. Point eight. What about fourteen point seven? Nothing. Oh, here comes Brother Stare. I've heard this guy on the shortwave radio for for so long. He's the only. I hate to even say it's the only uh, religious uh, voice that I've ever actually sat and listened to. But once in a while, he makes some sense. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, let the comments fly. So, what do we found out here? We found out the radio seems to be working kind of okay. Um, do I know for sure there's anything seriously wrong with it? No, I, I don't. I just remember I abandoned it because I felt it needed more attention more attention. Well, we're going to give it some more attention. So I'm going to explore this a little bit using the SDR radio, kind of a, just a general explanation without too many goals in mind. And we're going to see what we can find out about, about a few things about this radio. Uh, first of all, the last radio I did had five tubes. So you can discard or, or uh, ignore the rectifier tube. It had four active uh, signal tubes in it. Um, the first one was the mixer tube. That makes for a bad radio. This guy has, ignore the rectifier, one, two, three, four, five tubes, five, five tubes, one more tube. So he's got a front end RF tube. Pre pre pretty sure I'm pointing at the right tubes here. Front end RF tube. This was what was missing on the last radio. And then he's got a uh, IF amplifier between the two IF cans. And he's got a detector tube. Hey, what's this one doing here? I'll have to look at the schematic. It's got it's got an one, two, three, four, five tubes. Okay, something's not working out in my head, but I'm not gonna worry about it. Can't worry about what's in your head. So next thing is we're gonna get the SDR going and we're gonna take a look at what signals are reaching the volume control. That's where we're going to start. Okay, so we'll sidetrack there for a uh, little bit of time, but I'm back in my shop again now. So, I've done a fair bit of work in here. I can remember now. I've got the new capacitors here for the power supply. Got a couple of big capacitors changed here, but look, I've left all these wax ones in here so far and there's a molded one back here so I didn't complete the capacitor replacement which is I gotta kinda wonder about um, these are coming right from the antenna connection and the antenna is going through these capacitors these two capacitors and reaching uh, well, one of them is going into this coil arrangement the other one is following a yellow wire uh, all the way up into looks like into the switch here or somewhere up in here um, so let's see the lower screw is the lower capacitor is the one that's going to the wire that's going way up into there the other screw is A2 and G uh, so uh, and they're they're uh, tied together with a little piece here uh, so this is set up for a single wire antenna, which is why I've only got one connection made. I won't go into that any further. There's a ground connection here. It's also with a capacitor. 
and this other side of the capacitor is going right to the chassis. Now what else is on the chassis here? Let's see. So there's a terminal strip and the center terminal is riveted and it's connected. So I'm looking at how things are grounded. Here's a shield. I can see it's soldered down to the chassis. Here's a resistor soldered right to the chassis. So the, uh, the chassis is a big deal in this radio. It's, it's, uh, it's not just a metal shell near the radio. It's a component of the radio. So I think at this point. Uh, the other thing about this radio is there's no, it's a big radio, but there's no power transformer. It's a 5-tube radio, but it has 6 tubes. So it's a 6-tube radio. Uh, the filament voltages should add to around 115, 120 volts. Okay, let me apologize if you've been hearing my phone chattering on the video. I've had it in my shirt pocket by accident here while I've been in here. Hopefully that didn't happen. But if you've been hearing, you know, that usual bird on a wire type sound, that's my fault. So I'm part way through the capacitor work on here. I think that's what that would amount to. And I probably replaced some of the, you know, the key capacitors and I've left, I've left all these guys. It may or may not be a good idea. Um, I left this one. I was surprised I left this one in. I just didn't get to it. Okay, that's the story there. Now, volume control. I want to find out what signals are coming to the volume control. I'm picking on the volume control because that's a sort of a change point in the radio where you're changing from uh, radio frequency signals, IF signal in particular, to audio signals. And it's happening at or right around the volume control. So we're going to look on the schematic. I'm going to see where I should try to connect my SDR radio antenna to, to see something interesting. So let's take a look at the uh, schematic here. Okay, now, volume control. Where are you, Mr. Volume Control? I'm going to right at it here, I think. Let's zoom in on this. So you're going to find the volume control right near the detector. And uh, I can see the detector diodes here, just parallel together. Audio output would be coming here. This capacitor, this resistor together form a filter trying to drive the RF into the ground. That's a stupid way of saying it, but you can kind of think of it that way. That's so, so no RF should be present here. What should be here is the audio frequency, sound, and some DC. So here's the volume control. One end is tied right to, I'm, I guess this must be a chassis connection here, right to the chassis. The other end is the input end. We want to test this end. It'll be on the other side of the... <coughs> Excuse me. 50,000 ohm resistor here. I like route numbers, but ahead of the big 2 million ohm resistor over here. So right in here, we could ask the question, so what kind of RF is left here? I'm going to assume I've changed this capacitor down here already, but I can't remember specifically, but we'll assume this one's changed. This guy's job is to uh, dampen the voltage variations that occur on this side of the resistor. Slow the AVC effect is really what it's up to. So, we'll, so I'm going to hook up the SDR right here. I'll have a capacitor come off to protect the SDR from the little bit of DC that's here. There's probably minus, if something's tuned in, minus 5, 10, 15, 20 volts here. And we'll see how much RF is actually left here. We'll see what, what signals are present here. We won't see the audio with the way I'm going to do it, but we'll see the radio signals. Ideally, should be nothing at all left there. Okay, volume control is this one. High voltage on-off switch is right there, where I'm sticking my finger near it. So there's three terminals on the volume control. One of them is grounded. Can I spot the ground? 
Now there's a bare wire coming off one of them. That's usually the indication. The uh, manufacturers were uh, cheap enough to not use insulated wire where they didn't need it. So they've used bare wire. That's got to be the ground side. The input side's got to be right here. That's where we want to hook up the capacitator. The condenser. It's going to densify the electricity. Not that we're of interest in that. It's a fairly big capacitor to start with. Let's see. Now I've got a smaller capacitor with a resistor. I think it's a very it's not a very big resistor. 270 ohms, but it's something. We're going to start with this. So I am going to make sure that we're not disturbing the radio. The whole idea is that this is a place where I can hook up my SDR radio which has a low input, relatively low input impedance and not drain the life out of the radio. So that made absolutely no difference. Now, you see what I'm doing? The reason I'm willing to do this is because this radio is plugged into an isolation transformer. There are no grounds on it, no power system grounds attached to it in any way. So I'm pretty safe. Along with my rubber shoes, but I must show you. One of my rubber shoes. This is not very good. <laughs> That's gonna give me toe contact with the floor. And that's not so good. I'm in I'm in basically the lower floor of my house, a concrete floor uh, tile on top, so I'm probably again pretty safe. I'm standing on a rug too, but it no longer has a rubber backing non-rubber backed carpet. Anyway, I don't want to be responsible for your safety. Only you can be responsible for your safety. I'm going to just untangle this from here. So the advice I would give to anybody doing any of this work is, especially with a radio like this, no power transformer, tubes in series, read up on hot chassis, on the hot chassis uh, problem if you like. Hot chassis concern. Now, we're going to now, and, and also what I'm going to do here, uh, I will be risking my SDR radio, trying not to, but could easily make a little mistake, and goodbye to my $35 SDR radio, which you now have to pay about $75 to get. So I don't want that to happen either. So now I have a ground here I'm not going to connect start with and I'm not going to connect any of them to start with. We're going to call up the SDR on the screen. Calling SDR. SDR to the screen. Now we're going to switch it on here. Get it pro 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 protesting. Get it protesting. That's right. Now the band I want to do this on, I want to do this on the AM band, so I'm going to change the band. That's minimum volume there. Can't get rid of all the sound. Tuning it. Okay, so you see something moving on the SDR already. I haven't made any connections to the radio. So that thing that's moving back and forth as I'm tuning the radio back and forth, that's the local oscillator. So we set the local oscillator to a million for some reason. The radio is now tuned 460 or 455 below that. Five. 540 or something of that sort. Funny, funny sounds coming through the radio. Now, uh, I am now going to connect the SDR antenna to that little capacitor. You saw. I'm holding it with my hand there. Just touching it with my hand again so you can see the response. There's a few signals that are not going up and down. They are staying the same. Like if you look at right around 10 point 40. You see one signal that just doesn't go up and down. Who knows what that is? Something coming out of the SDR itself. Okay, I'm going to make the connection. Could this be the end of the SDR? No. Okay, I'm going to clip it on. Clip. Tune the radio a little bit. 
and you can see the local oscillator. Now you can see down around below the 500, just about off scale. Let, let me put the red pointer here, down here at 450. The uh, screen jumped to the right there, by the way. So this is where we are now. This is 450. The IF is 460. Let me put it to 4, 455, I think it is. I don't know offhand. It's either 455 or 460, something like that. Now, as I tune the radio, if you watch the area that I clicked the red line on, you'll see stuff kind of rolling through there. So what we're seeing is the output. I heard some music there for a moment. We're seeing the output of the IF present on the volume control. And this is 450, 455 kilohertz. So it's hardly snuffed out. But it could be weakened far, far from what it would have been had a that little capacitor I pointed to not been there. So we have to guess this is suppressed, but again, not gone away. Or is this indicating a problem in the radio? No, I, I don't think so offhand. We're listening to the radio. But certainly in the past, I sort of imagined these signals were snuffed out to pretty much zero. But they are not. They're certainly present at the volume control. So an interesting question now would be, well, how much of this is making it all the way to the uh, audio grid of the well, of the grid of the audio output to. Um, that's an interesting question. Uh, is there any other funny stuff? So let's look for the uh, first harmonic of uh, of the local oscillator. So I'm going to turn the local oscillator as low as it will go here, lowest frequency I can get it. It's almost there now. That's the bottom. So that's just around a million. So we think up around two million, which is off the screen. And let's slide the whole thing to the right. Two million is here. Where I've put the red line now, I'm going to tune the radio. We'll see, is there something moving around in there amongst all that, inter all those interference signals? see. That's very interesting. Now the last radio I did, we could see these harmonics going up every million hertz. When we, when we had the original local oscillator at a million, we could see one at two million, three million, and even at ten million there was still a tiny amount left. But in this case, it's weak enough, it's below the, uh, the noise. Uh, we, can't, we can't see it. What about three, four, and five? Let, let's let's go up a little bit here. We'll go up. So I'm right on the red line happens to be right around three. Lucky break. I'm gonna now tune the radio. Okay, so we can see a little something there. Oh, that's the end of the run. Let's just see, but see, relative to the noise signals, the very annoying noise signals, it's weak. This radio has managed to suppress the harmonics coming from the local oscillator. Let's go up to four. Okay, red line sitting on four. Maybe something's going to surprise us here. So at four, I can still see it there. Uh, not around the red line. Around the green line. The green line is where I just happened to have dropped the cursor. I can get it down around the red line. Uh, it's very hard to see again, really below that interfering noise. Um, these are just curiosities to me. I really don't know what to say about it. I think the, the lesson I've learned so far, having looked at two radios like this, is uh, suppressing these powerful signals is uh, difficult, and the, the goal would be to suppress them enough that they don't matter anymore. And how could they matter? They could matter because they can get back to the sensitive front end of the radio and start coming through again, as any signal on the antenna would do. So why don't we take a look at the front end tube. This is a little tricky now. And see if we can see uh, 
harmonics of the local oscillator and the output of the IF if it's present at all right at the input to the radio and uh, certainly if the IF output is present at the antenna input or the first tube or, or earlier on in the radio you'd be set up for weird oscillations motor boating and some other I'm sure some other effects that maybe I'm not even familiar with yet so I'm staring at the radio trying to decide what to do so we're going to move the antenna input to the uh, to the first tube okay let, let me stop for a minute and I'll clear my head on this one okay let's take a peek here and see where we think we can connect what we want to see is what is going into this tube on the antenna circuit. So this has got to be the antenna circuit here. Going in. So what happens if I connect right on here? Look, this is connected right to the tuning capacitor. So this terminal is exposed on the tuning capacitor. So we could go right there. But that's sure to detune the radio. Now what would that matter? All I want to do is have some kind of signal being processed down here, being detected. And then we want to come back and see how much of it shows up here. Um, part of the reason it wouldn't be here is because this is a tuned circuit tuned to a frequency two or three times the IF as much as two or three times the IF. Um, I don't know, overthinking it. Let's just find this spot and uh, connect to it. And uh, we can, we can you know, hear the radio and hear what it does to the radio so we know if we're really kiboshing it. I'm sure we will be kiboshing it. Let's find out. Okay, so that connection is on the tuning capacitor. our tuning capacitor. No terminals up here. Hey, where's the terminals? The terminals must go straight through. They must be exposed under the chassis only. Okay, so there, there's the terminal. I don't think you see that yet. Right through that hole. There's one terminal. And the other one is down under there. Okay, the one terminal comes to a capacitor and then comes to the switch. I can assume one terminal, okay, so now I'm looking at the capacitor here and what I am seeing is that both halves of the, it's a two, two part tuning capacitor, both halves are the same size. So that tells us they aren't using the capacitor trick uh, on the local oscillator and means it can't really look at it and spot the local oscillator too easily. Okay, so we'll try this by touching it. We'll disturb it a little bit. Try this one. So, sounds like it didn't retune the radio at all. And the other one, wow, yeah, stick this big screwdriver shank in there with bare wires everywhere. That's not going to work. I need a insulated metal thing that I can stick up there. Uh, that's a little tricky. So, so this is a... <laughs> that's a little long. Yeah, that's not going to work. It's too long. Good idea, but no. Do I boldly go up there? Is there a better approach to this? I hear you, cat. If you can't go out, there's really no way in there. There's no comfortable way in there. Let me try. This is much less metal. Touch the first one again. You can't even tell. Well, 
If it's the oscillator, maybe it'll, it'll, it'll still affect it. See, I wonder if this is metal all the way through. Contact, nothing happened. Yes, is there a cat here? There he is. What do you want? Come on in. Come on in. No, come on in. Okay, I'll be a minute. Just wait there. I don't know if he, uh, if he appreciates the wait there part of it. He wants to spend time with me, I can tell. He doesn't want to go outside. It's minus two outside today. <laughs> Listen to him. Well, we still we don't know which is which. Okay, we'll try from the top. We'll try from the top, because you can get at the plates themselves here. So we have the statter plates, which are insulated. Which one is retuning it? So I'm shorting them out. Still working. Short these out. Dead radio. And you know what? We have these. We have these right here. This is also. <sighs> okay, still not absolutely sure who's who. Okay, so this is retuning it. hear it. This is not. This is just weakening it or strengthening it. So that's oscillator at the back. RF at the front. This is the one we want. We want the front one, which is so hard to get. But I can just click on here, Jim. Really. Put this on. Okay, no big change yet. And then we'll clip on the antenna connection. Peanut, I'm going to be more than a minute. Antenna connection. It's down here on the floor. Okay, we'll touch this and see if the SDR drags down the radio. Something terrible. Again, okay, I don't have the ground connected. In, in my mind, that reduces the uh, effect of the SDR and reduces the signal strength going to the SDR. In my mind. Now, let's take a look at the SDR. Okay, so the question we have for Mr. SDR is can you pick up the output of the IF here on the antenna line? Now, bearing in mind, I could be picking this up with the SDR in indirect ways. Even though I made a kind of a direct connection to the uh, antenna. So I'm going to tune the radio see what happens here. So you see the local oscillator moving up around a megahertz back and forth. And right around the IF area. Let me put this. This is this red line is where the SDR is tuned. So we're going to put it down at 455. I think that's the proper IF frequency. So now we're looking right in here to see if there's any effect of the IF as I tune around. And very little if there's anything. Hang on, Peanut. He's, he's climbing the door now. Well, that's really interesting. Now, the last radio I did this with, you could, you could see the IF frequency sitting on the antenna. Oh, interesting, too. If you look right in this area here as I tune the local oscillator back and forth here. If you look in here, you'll see those signals uh, changing their height. And that's indicative of the front end tuning coming across. And you can see it just all the way up to, well, it's up around 1500 now. That's interesting. That really didn't exist in the last radio. Very interesting. Okay, it looks like this radio 
less IF output signal making it back to the start than the other radio. If I remember right. Okay, got to go and settle my cat down. Okay, I think the next thing I want to do uh, is use the sweep generator, sweep a signal through the AM band, that my sweep generator only goes through the AM band, and look at the, try to see the response of the front end tuning in this radio. And that will give us a chance to double check its alignment here on the broadcast band also in terms of the antenna alignment adjustment. And I believe I did all these as best I could, but I had this uh, feeling that things didn't come out as well as they could. That's how I remember this. Uh, okay, so I will set things up for that. We will look at the results uh, using the SDR to get a spectrum analysis across the uh, AM band. See if I can make all that work. Okay, now uh, you can see the, uh, the SDR on the screen. Uh, it's still connected to the tuning capacitor or the grid of the uh, first two. Uh, I've also connected my uh, sweep generator here to the antenna. That's what this, this lead is doing. And I've also included a ground, this white lead and that ground back to the SDR. So the SDR is not just the antenna wire, single wire. It's now grounded. Grounded it to the same point as the uh, uh, as the signal generator. Uh, you don't want to have two different grounded points on a radio like this. That's for sure. And, and the ground here is on the other side of this capacitor too. So a little bit of capacitor protection there. What do we see? Now, let me just turn down the sweep output. You saw something change on the SDR. So I'm gonna crank up the sweep output. It's gonna sweep through the AM band. And we're gonna look and see what it looks like. And I'm gonna tune the radio and see what happens to it. Let me do that. I'm going to crank this up. You can hear it coming out of the speaker. This is going up to the uh, top of the AM band, but it looks like it's swamped by that interference stuff. Um, I'm going to change a setting here on the SDR. The SDK I'm going to reduce to basically nothing. Or, or we're going to get some idea of what this looks like curve wise. What we're expecting here is it should be kind of come across and then we should see a rise and a fall right at the frequency that we're tuned to. Right now the radio is tuned to um, okay, almost 700 kilohertz. So 700 puts it over here. There's this funny peak thing here. This is the very edge of the SDRs, I'm sorry, of the uh, sweep. The sweep is starting right here. I wish I could start a little lower. Okay, so I got a, a little bit of decay in here, or we're going to be fooled. There we go. You know, the, the SDR is jumping around uh, because, it, because it's a radio and it's really not built for this kind of purpose. So I'm going to tune the radio now and we'll see, we'll see what kind of variation happens here, if anything. You see the local oscillator traveling Oh my, okay, so you see local oscillator traveling up around 1300. And you can see the this response curve moving upwards. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to tune the radio and that response curve, I'm going to watch it until it gets up around 900. Oh my gosh, that's all. It didn't get there. It didn't go anywhere. It, it barely got to 700. Something not quite right there. And we're tuning down. This is just about the bottom of the band. And look, it looks like that curve would be down in the IF almost. It looks like it's way off. That's what it looks like. Way, way, way off. This could explain why we weren't able to pull out radio stations. The, the front end's not tuned to the right spot. Let's fix that if we can't. 
Okay, so we're going to set this to, let's say, 800. Oh, watch out. There's more than one 8 on here. 800. So the radio is tuned to 800. It's definitely on band number 1. So we expect that peak to be at 800. But to me, it's down here at 550. Now, what, what adjustment is going to fix that? Oh, boy. Um, I'm going to have to stop and look at the... Uh, there's no adjustments up here. They're all, they're all kind of down here. Here, here, I can't remember. So I'm going to study the uh, uh, instructions on alignment and figure out which one of these adjustments is the critical one for moving that response curve. So I'm going to stop for a little bit here. Okay, adjustment number 11, I think is the right one. It's kind of a cockeyed diagram here. You see there's three things here and four things there. This one, number nine, is closest to the volume control. So it's the farthest one from the volume control on the bank of three, to be sure. Okay, so looking at the radio, bank of three, farthest from the volume, this guy. the right one. Let's put the SDR back up. So the radio is tuned to 800 here. I want this peak to be sitting way over here. It's way off. Can we get it there? adjustment is normally done at 1500 with a signal fre single frequency signal generator and a voltmeter. It's not moving at all. So this is very unnerving because that means maybe I got the wrong control and I've just mucked it up. Nobody else is responding. That seems like an oscillator adjustment to me. Well, if it is, then the local oscillator would be running all over the place while I'm doing this. And no, it's not. So what do we got? We got a front end that won't tune in. How come? The sound we're hearing coming out of the speaker probably wouldn't change much with the uh, sweep on. So if we think the radio is tuned to 800. Why don't we hit it with 800? Okay, changing signal generators. Thinking hard now. Uh, input off. There's now a ground on the radio. I need to keep that in mind. And we're going to feed in single frequency. Single, single frequency from this signal generator at 800 kilohertz fairly strong signal coming. Hello. There it is. Look. Now this is a strong signal. The SDR is uh, weakening the uh, radio. How, how, how badly is it weakening the radio? It's causing the radio to retune. So how do you like that? This whole, this whole test is bogus the way I'm doing it. Okay, so rather than make a direct connection, I uh, will try to use a pickup coil to see if we can see if we can pull this off. Yeah, pickup coil near this might do the trick. I can probably leave the radio running. Let's disconnect here. Everything off there. That didn't retune it. Made it louder though. Just possible, even without a coil, just doing something dumb like this. Like what? Down, down here, down here. Doing something dumb like that. There's nothing here. This is the antenna to my SDR. Waving it around. You can see it's picking up a local oscillator quite easily. 
Uh, we need to go back to the sweep. That's the problem here. Okay, back to the sweep. So we'll take off the single single frequency generator. Connect up the sweep. Blasting. Okay, uh, we don't see anything at all, but then I haven't got this out. So I'll hold this near here, trying not to short out the radio anywhere. I don't really see too much happening there. Yeah, we, we need a coil on here. A coil. So I happen to have one right here. Not exactly high tech. up here. It's an interesting results. I, I don't know what to explain going out getting higher, higher, and then lower, 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 and then other things going up and down. Stuff jumping around. Do we see a tuning hump? Anywhere in there? Mm, I would say no. Because the signal's not strong enough, this is going to get a little noisy here. Well, that wouldn't change the hump. Well, I guess it would. Hey, there is a hump. There's a hump at the red line. Yes, the hump. Okay, tune the radio. Is that is that the hump? Yes, it is. So there, now this is a more accurate way of doing this. So once again, we'll tune to 800. Okay, now we look. And the hump is at 900. Is that right? For sure, are we tuned? Well, let's see. Local oscillator, we can figure this out. We can calculate this. Let me just turn this down here. So, the local oscillator, I will wiggle it a bit. There it is. It's at 1350. Say 1355. The radio's tuned to 900. But the dial says 900. Hey! <laughs> Everything's good. Actually, the dial says 900. Well, let's check it on the sing single frequency thing again. I mean, I did, I did align this radio. Okay, we'll just take that one off. We'll attach this one here. Okay, Mr. Radio, are you really tuned? Hard to read. The numbers are right in here. Nine hundred, right on the money. Okay, we're nine hundred on here. We're nine hundred on here. We're nine hundred on the front end peak. We're glory bound. Why? Why won't this radio pick anything up? So let's tune to eight sixty. I'll put 860 on here. The reason is there's a station that I use to check the sensitivity of radios. 860, we'll tune down to find it. You know, the position of this thing is critical. I've got it on zero, which I think is where it should be, but is there a chance it should be at 100? So here we are, we are tuning in 860 on the dial. You know what happens? I keep looking at the wrong, wrong dial numbers. That's about 860 there. 860 is actually here. So we're picking it up. Pretty darn close. The French station should be right there. We'll take off the signal generator. And we will attach the outdoor antenna. The outdoor antenna. Just down here now. First, just the center conductor. And we'll connect the ground. Th this might help a lot. Let's see. More volume. Volume fixes everything in these radios.
you'd have to say no. Okay, but I'm not done yet. I have another antenna. The next antenna is a loop antenna. This is going to work. Let me just get it here. Antenna connector out. And I'm going to need, I'll use this one. a large loop antenna behind me, you'll see it in a moment. So I get this wire. So fall down. Pull the uh, pull everything, pull the radio off the bench. I wouldn't want that to happen. This is just a strain relief the antenna lead. Okay, this is coming from the loop antenna. around 800. Now I'm going to tune the loop antenna here. I'm going to come back this way. I'm sorry to show you the junk pile in my shop. I'm working on the junk. There's the loop antenna. Okay, down here. Two things. Directional. Tuning. Sweet spot. Two direction. Okay, so our radio's probably not too great on the station, but I bet you I can get it now. I bet you twenty cents. What they break? The antenna is directional, uh, but what it really has is not so much a direction where it's strongest. It has a direction where it's weakest. It has a very deep null point on those kinds of antennas, and you can steer the null point around and aim it at your noise source. And I'm lucky. The reason I said I'm lucky is because it looks like when the null is aimed at the noise source, the peak side, which isn't nearly as responsive, but it's still there, is aimed at the station. So I get a combination of that terrible noise disappeared and the station came in real nice. The other thing I hate to admit, and if you're a Canadian living in Quebec, you know, this is what happened to me. Uh, started studying French in I think grade six, grade five, grade six. We started learning French and I stopped in grade 11. So it's six, seven, eight, nine, ten, part way through 11. That many years of learning French and I haven't got a clue what this woman is saying. Isn't that terrible? Am I just, just to complain more if you're Canadian, uh, not living in Quebec, you might, especially if you live in Ontario and you're my age, you probably experienced exactly the same thing. If they just taught us how to speak French and forget about writing it, forget about reading it, just speak it, we probably would be successful. Yeah, that's my complaint. So it's a sad thing, I can't, I can't speak French. There's a lot of things going on in Quebec that you know an English Canadian cannot really share in. Like there's a lot of there's a whole music industry there. I mean I can listen to it and I, and I do hear French stuff coming from Quebec, but mostly no. It's it's really a shame. Okay, so he said 24. I caught that. <laughs> Donald Trump, I caught that. 
That's pretty good. Mr. Trump is going to make an announcement today, and everyone's hopping about it, of course. Yes, sir. Mr. Trump. Now, uh, what to do next? What are we finding out here? We're finding out the alignment's fairly good. What, what am I? What am I complaining about? There was a. Did I do a sensitivity study somewhere in here? That I wrote down the sensitivities. I think this is me trying to figure out uh, which side the local velocity is on. Did I do a sensitivity study? Did I, did I not? That might even be for another radio. Well, it's not that bad uh, offhand. I think I have to look through, we've just been looking at the broadcast band. I think we've got to go through the uh, three shortwave bands, uh, sort out their sensitivity and uh, double check their alignment in the same sort of way I'm doing here and uh, see what we see. Very good. Thanks a lot for watching. Uh, while, while, while I was making this video, I took delivery for a repair the smallest tube radio I've ever seen. I, I don't have it here with me, but it sits in my hand. The tube radio. So that's somewhere down the road too. Okay, tomorrow, short wave side of this thing, and maybe we're wrapping it up that fast.